Hello and welcome to today's podcast. We are honored to have a special guest with us today, Mr. Tonke. Uh, he is a dedicated social activist and the president of Burmese Rohingya Organization UK. Uh, Mr. Tonke has been a prominent leader in fighting for the rights of justice and the rights of for the Rohingya people, working to bring global attention to the plight and the advocate for justice. Today, we will be discussing the seventh anniversary of Rohingya genocide, reflecting on the journey from the tragedy to awareness and exploring the ongoing challenges faced by the Rohingya community. Thank you so much. Start, could you please introduce yourself to the audience and share how you have become involved in Rohingya activism? As a president of the Burmese organization, UK, what are the some main challenges and responsibilities you face? Also, as we mark the seventh anniversary of Rohingya genocide, what does this milestone mean to you personally and to the global community? Firstly, I'm a Rohingya. I was born and brought up in Arkhala State, western part of Burma. I left when I was about 17. And I just want to highlight that here. Rohingya are facing genocide many decades. Many people knew after 2017 where one million people fled from Burma to Bangladesh and where thousands of Rohingya were killed and raped, thousands of women by military and more than 390 villages burned down. That was well aware internationally. So after that, uh, we have this anniversary genocide of seven years now. That's how um, I left from Burma when I was 17 and, you know, I started in London and I lead. I am working as a president of Burmese Rohingya Organization UK, founded with other Rohingya brothers and sisters in London. Here, we our pl- our our aim is to highlight internationally the Rohingya situation, to end this genocide, which is going for many decades. Same time, we want to we want to empower our community, where our community was destroyed by Burmese military for many decades. That is the aim and we do documentation and we do advocacy and we working hard on justice and accountability, uh, filing a case in Argentina and other jurisdictions we are working on. Thank you, Mr. Tongin, for sharing your journey with us. It's inspiring to hear about your dedication and the immense responsibility you carry as a leader in this movement. So the next question is about the impact of the genocide on the Rohingya communities has been profound, as you know. So could you explain how it has affected the community and both in the immediate survival and the long-term social impact? What are the, some major challenges that survivals continue to face even seven years later? To be honest, it's been seven years, one million approximately Rohingya genocide survivors fled from Burma to Bangladesh. Until now, there is no such way they can return because Burmese military, you know, committing genocide against Rohingya. On the other side, Arkhan army now who is fighting against Burmese military, they are also target in Rohingya and recently in last few months in Butidong township at least 2,000 Rohingya were killed and 200,000 Rohingya become IDPs and Mounda township in August 5 at least 300 Rohingya were killed artillery and drone attacks uh, many Rohingya were killed before August 5. So now our ancestral land, we all become IDPs. And thousands of Rohingya were fled to people are without food, humanitarian aid, I mean, without food, without medicine, and they were trapped on the fightings. And same time, Burmese military also targeting Rohingya uh, they are at uh, same time while Burmese military is committing ongoing genocide Arkhan army also targeting as I said before now Rohingya were targeted by both so where these people will go and there is one thing that many people fleeing to Bangladesh some people were pushed back those boats and we hear and even yesterday at least seven boats were pushed back by Bangladesh, BGP, border guard, uh, 
Baragat police. This is what's going on Rohingya situation. So, in, where is international community? And one uh, in 21st century, Rohingyas are facing genocide. This is yeah. Yeah. very serious matter, urgency, when we talk about human lives. Rohingya people, day by day, they are, they are wiping out from their ancestral land. This is very important that people are dying, children are dying, women are dying, elderly people are dying every day in Butinong and Maundo. Because no medical care, no proper food they are having. And instead, they are trapped in the IDP camps, you know, is very congested IDP camps. And the other side, Bangladesh, one million people, they're not getting proper medical care. They're not getting, uh, not recognized as a refugee. So our community is really in danger. And how we can empower this community, this is very important. So international community have to step in to intervene to protect Rohingya people in our Khan and another side to empower Rohingya community who are in Bangladesh, we must have, we should have our rights to hit a study, rights to move from one place to another. And these are really important. Otherwise, our community will be used by human traffickers and other, you know, um, other gangs. That is a big danger for young generation in future. So young generation are our uh, important resource for our community. So where will be after 10 years, if your generation cannot allow a study, what can happen in this community? You can, you can imagine about it. Your insight onto the long-term effect of the genocide are both powerful and heartbreaking, of course. So the next question is about recently, we have seen the public protest misinformation that negatively impact the minorities in Bangladesh. How the Rohingya community being affected by these issues and what is your call to the action regarding these ongoing challenges? Um, we haven't seen anything so far. And one thing we can say that we appreciate always Bangladesh government, the people of Bangladesh, they give us shelter. That is really Bangladesh government and the people of Bangladesh giving us shelter in the state. So these people were flat to Bangladesh. They were welcome. They given us a shelter. We really appreciate that. So far, we haven't seen anything like that. Uh, thank you so much for addressing uh, about this. And the next question is about reflecting on the last seven years. How would you review the global response to the Rohingya genocide? Have the international efforts and advocacy groups make a difference in raising awareness or improvement the situation for the Rohingya people? Seven years now, international community, you know, we've been advocating. It's, we we appreciate international community support for humanitarian aid. But we need, there is a political solution. Um, one million people, they want to return their homeland. They want to return their villages. They want to return their, uh, their homes where they where they used to live, you know, and unfortunately, international community is not doing enough. And we have seen even United States government, they declare genocide as still, they haven't done a strong action to protect Rohingya genocide survivors. Because out of 3 million, uh, you know, there is Rohingya population 3 million, only 600,000 left inside Burma. You can imagine diaspora. Bangladesh, one million, and many in India, Malaysia. So, particularly the Rohingyas who are in India, they are facing uh, really threat and no protection at all. So, we need these genocide survivors. Protection is very important. And you can imagine when your country, you're facing genocide, when you fled, you facing another threat and risks of your life. And that is really important that to protect this community. 
and international community they support humanitarian aid again as i said but we need political solution return them rohingya want to return their homeland with their rights their ethnic rights uh, citizenship rights and returning their original villages that is very important original home where they come from that is what international community must put must push and unfortunately not doing enough of course we want to bring justice those military who committed genocide and we have seen international court of justice a case in gambia and there is a case in international criminal court icc uh, and there is another case i filed um, um there is a case uh, there is let me repeat there is another case our organization filed in argentina that case is also moving forward so we're looking at arrest warrant military uh, leader ming online and other top generals to bring to justice so we wa we are working hard to get justice because without justice there is no peace and but international community must do more to protect the Roh rohingya people that is very important also we we would like to see international community, you know, more focus on justice and accountability. That is important. More action from international community to fulfill its commitment to hold Burmese military accountable for its actions and ensuring justice for the Rohingya people. Uh, this is crucial to restore the humanity and dignity of the victims of, of and survivors of the Rohingya genocide. We will never give up until justice is done. We will go wherever our plight for justice is hard. We will work hard. We Rohingya are doing what we can to secure justice for the Rohingya genocide. You know, Argentina case, what our organization, where uh, the, the case in Argentina, which was filed by our organization, Bambi's Rohingya organization, UK, that investigates the Rohingya genocide, continues to move, uh, the, uh, investigate Rohingya genocide committed by Bambi's military. And we have the chance to give direct testimony to the court to submit concrete evidence to follow the investigation and to require the arrest warrants of me online, so Wing and five other military leaders. All this has been very important to fortify our confidence on the ideas of justice and to strengthen our community. When the Argentina court issued this arrest warrant, it will be the first time in the history of Myanmar that a court of law prosecute the top generals of military. Uh, about, uh, we are cautious about the limitations of this case, but such a decision will be milestone and extraordinary toll to continue the fight. We hope that all countries around the world will help to execute those warrants. We will work hard to achieve results and we continue and to continue the investigation of the crimes committed all over Myanmar. Uh, we appreciate your candid and thoughtful response. So the last question is about what are the main objectives of Burmese Rohingya organization and other advocacy groups? What the actions are needed to support the Rohingya communities from the crisis? Uh, our community, we need to empower uh, Rohingya young generation support. What I mean empower is Rohingyas are not getting university education in the camp and other parts of the countries, other parts of the world they really need support to study uh, and also shelter and many rohingya they don't have worked in many countries so rohingya should be allowed as a recognized refugee and should be allowed to work and also same time uh, rohingya remaining in Burma, who are middle of the fighting with our economy and Burmese military immediate humanitarian aid allowing and also pressuring our Khan army which is rebel group to uh, stop disappearances extortion and killing of rohingya people in our rakhine state that is very urgently needed and same time uh, we want to see u.n security council refer Obama to icc to bring those responsible to justice also, we want to see military criminal who committed genocide against Rohingya um, 
arms embargo, global arms embargo they should support and also military and military related company sanctioning is very important. Also, we would like to urge international community, organization of Islamic cooperation, United Nations, ASEAN. There is one million people uh, in refugee camp since 2017. It is important that to improve the situation of refugee genocide survivors in the camp, particularly young generation. Secondly, whenever a storm, whenever, you know, rainy season, there are uh, always danger for them. Many Rohingya refugees lost their lives and that need to be improved by the international community. Many countries can support through Bangladesh about it. And same time, you know, Rohingya diaspora in other countries, India, Saudi Arabia, you know, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, we have to support uh, through the resettlement or any other means they can. That is very important. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Tonkin, for sharing your insights and for your continued dedication to advocating for the Rohingya community. As we reflect on this important anniversary, it is crucial to remain aware, engaged, and committed to support those who have suffered and continue to suffer as a res result of this tragedy. Thank you so much for joining us today and to our listener. Thank you for staying in, stay informed, and let's continue to work together towards a world where justice and human rights are upheld for all. Thank you so much for today.